Hi, I'm going to continue where I left off in that last video. I am not really sure why I put this put um, this conditional probability mass function. This is this is a hard problem. Um, let me change color right now. Um, what's hard about this is um, we know that probability y equals y. If you go back up there, that's a that's a binomial. So on the bottom. I can substitute in the density function for a binomial down here, but up here I don't see a nice function for the joint distribution. Um, you know, when I put in x equals 0, y equals 0, I get an eighth. When I put in x equals 0, y equals 1, I get 2 eighths, 0, 2, 1 eighth. So I was just sitting thinking about this. This is not, I don't even know if there is a nice closed form. So if you want to give me a nice closed form solution, you know, in terms of x and y for this, that, that would be great. Otherwise, um, the only way at the moment I can think that I would do it, um, I want to, I want to kind of erase, I don't know if I have a, a eraser here. Um, is that what this is? Yeah, what I could do is just find this, uh, do it as a piecewise function, but it's a little bit painful. It will take a while. Um, I'll just start it off and show you what I mean by that. I mean, the, it can only take on so many values because it's discrete and it's only defined at, you know, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 2, 3 for y. So, for example, um, maybe this was an easier way to do it. Yay. Now I know. Get rid of this over here. Um, so we could have started out and said um, P, oh, let me grab this pen again, P of uh, X given Y, uh, X given, so we start off at Y equals zero and we define P of X given Y equals zero. So um, in this case, if y is 0, that means there were totally no heads, then um, x can take on the value 0, 1. The probability 0, meaning that there were no head on the last throw, would be a certain event, and that there's one head is not going to happen. So there I've defined p of x given y given x equal to 0. Then I can define p of x given y x given y is equal to 1. So same way, um, x can either take on the value 0 or it can take on the value 1. So if we go back up to our chart, um, given y is equal to 1, so I'm sitting right here, um, that's a 3 eighths total probability. So it's either 2 thirds that x takes on the value 1 or 0, so it's 2 thirds and 1 third. This would be uh, two thirds. This would be one third. Then I could define probability x given y. X given y is equal to two. This is going to be uh, one third that x is zero and two thirds that x is one. And then probability of x given y. X given y equals three um, is equal to zero. So if I get three heads, then it's certain that the last flip was a head. So I've defined the conditional spelling out every value that y could be, So, but I don't see a nice closed form solution. But if you can come up with one, uh, all you need is that definition for the, the joint, which I don't see at the moment. So we'll put bonus here if anybody wants to go back and uh, look at this. I'm re I really need this to go in the numerator, but I can't find a nice closed form for that at the moment, but it is midnight, so maybe I'm just not thinking. Um, so here by definition is probability of y given x, the density function, the conditional density function is this, and otherwise it's this, but again, I mean, this is just the probability x is x and y is y over the probability x is x. Same difference. Um, all I wanted to show here was that um, if I sum this over the support of x, it's a really nice little proof I should be doing, but if I sum over support of x, I get 1. Otherwise, this is a valid probability mass function. Um, 
if x and y are independent, then probability x given y should just be the marginal of x because I have independence. Um, I hope you can see that. And expected value of x given y equals y is I'm just multiplying the conditional times x. Um, law of unconscious statistician holds. That's what I'm showing here. And uh, I, I believe in solutions. I probably wrote this, this, this little proof out nicely. Um, down here, let's do, I guess, do another one. Suppose x and y have joint probability of mass function. Here it is. Here's the points. Um, so what's the probability? 1, 2 would be uh, 4 39ths. Uh, 1, 3 would be 9 39ths. Uh, let me see. Uh, 2, 2, 4, 8 39ths. And this would be 2 times 9, right? 2 times 9 is 18 39ths. So this makes sense. This would be 13 39ths. This would be 36 39ths. This would be 12 39ths. And this would be 27 39ths. So this is one third. This is two thirds. Um, 12 39ths is uh, 4 thirteenths and 9 thirteenths. Okay, so um, here's y's density and here's uh, x's density. Okay. Find the conditional probability that x is 1 given y is 2. So that's the probability that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2 over probability y is equal to 2. So x equal 1, y equal 2 is 4 39ths divided by y is equal to 2 is equal to 4 thirteenths. So this is 13 39ths, which is one third. Okay, so notice the probability x is equal to 1 given y is equal to 2 is equal to one third. But um, that's the same as probability x is equal to 1 is one third. So I can see now I have independence. Um, determine the conditional probability mass function. So again, I could either do this in picture in, in pieces, but I think we can see that probability x equals x is equal to um, one third, two thirds. So what is this? This is just um, x over three for x is equal to one and two, right? And probability y is y. Let's see, it's either 14 or 13. So what is that? Um, y squared over 13 when y is either 2 or 3. So the conditional mass function, probability of or p of x given y, is equal to the joint, which we have up here. So x y squared over 39 divided by the marginal for y, which is right here. So y squared over 13. So this is equal to, it's always the math I have a hard part about. This is this one third x, right? Well, which actually we just said a minute ago. So probably x given y is just a third x, but this is just p of x. So I know x and y are independent. Yay. OK, so determine the conditional mass function the other direction. I'm not going to be as silly this time. Probably y given x, y given x. Um, because I know that they're independent, that's just going to be y squared over 13, um, y equal 1, or sorry, 2, 3. Right, and this was for x is equal to 1, 2. I mean, no matter what y is, it didn't have an impact on x. And whatever x is doesn't have an impact on y. There's the conditional and the conditional. Are x and y independent? Yeah, I mean, we've shown this in parts b and c. 
So I think I want to take a break. Hi, uh, one more section, perhaps um, the hardest one for a while. Um, once we get past 8.3, we're going to go to chapter 11, a little bit nicer for a while. Um, probably 8.3 is maybe the toughest we'll do now until the end. Um, conditional probabilities. Now, after I taught this to the other class, I realized it probably would have been helpful to remind them um, probability of A given B. Because later in the course somebody said, oh, why didn't you just tell us which, what you meant? But probably A given B is the probability of the intersection divided by probability of B. Right? I mean, it was the probability that um, you know, with the Venn diagram, um, given that B has happened, this is the given one. So given that we're sitting in, imagine this is B, what's the probability A occurs? And the only way A can occur is in the intersection here. So it's really just a ratio of A and B occurring over B having had occurred. Um, so this really is no different when we get to functions. Um, we're still going to look at, we're looking at the probability that both occur over the probability of the given. So when we do this in terms of functions, it really takes on the same idea. Think of the intersection over the marginal, or otherwise the joint divided by the marginal in terms of functions. So first I just wanted to set up an easy example so that you could kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to flip a coin three times. X is the number of heads heads on the last flip. And you can only have zero or one head on the last flip, either it's a head or it's not. And Y is the total number of heads on all three flips. So this is my Y and this is my X. And here's the joint. Uh, probability mass function um, 0 0 is occurs eighth of the time that's tail 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 right there's no heads totally and there's no heads on the last toss um, 3 would mean I have three heads uh, but then x equals 0 means I have no heads on the last toss so this is impossible and I give it probability 0 um, so these are just, I listed the outcomes, there's eight outcomes, and so here's like uh, x equals 0, y equals 1, x equals 0, y equals 2, so all, all the possibilities. Um, the probability x is 0, I add across, uh, the marginal is just 4 eighths, and the probability x is 1 is 4 eighths, but that, that makes sense, right? If you toss a coin three times, what's the probability last flip is a head? Um, four eighths was so probably it's not a head four eighths um, and flee and three flips what's the total number of heads you could have zero one two or three um, zero heads is one eighth that's tail 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 um, three heads is head 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 and then these combined in the center are three eighths and three eighths and again it's about here's your um, marginal for y's and your marginal for x's. And so now I want to start answering some conditional problems. Um, I wish I could save that picture and all these questions. What's the probability the last flip is heads given two total heads? So here's two total heads. I'm sitting in here. Okay, given two total heads. So that's my denominator. What's the probability of one head on the last flip. So that's two eighths. So this is going to be two thirds. Right? If you think about it, when, when y is equal to two, there's three cases and two of them have a head on the last flip. So in other words, what I'm trying to find is probability um, x equal one given y equals two. And the top is just, right, the intersection over, and so that's where we got two a's from, over the probability y is equal to 2, which is 3 eighths. But again, we could just do it from looking at the table. I'm going to try to not go down very much farther because I don't want to lose the nice picture 
or the nice table we have, what's the probability that the last flip is a head given that three total heads are flipped? Well, it has to be one, right? Um, so what's the probability, let's write it out this way, that the last flip is a head given y is equal to three. So this is the probability that x equals one and y equals one over probability y equals three. So, um, oops, y equals one, y equals three, sorry. Um, x equals one, y equals three. So x one, y equals three is right here, which is an a times the probability that y is equal to three is an a. So this is certain, which kind of makes sense. I mean, if you have three total heads, then the last flip has to be a heads. If you have three toying costs and three are heads, the last has to be a head. So this is a certain event. Um, let's go a little bit further. What's the probability that last flip is a head given that at least two heads have been flipped? So what's the probability that the last flip is a head given, in this case, y is bigger than or equal to to at least that many. So again, that's just the intersection probability that x is equal to 1 and y is greater than or equal to 2, all divided by probability y is greater than or equal to 2. So y is greater than or equal to 2 half the time over probability x is 1 and y is greater than or equal to 2. So that's these two cases, which is 3 eighths. So 3 eighths. So what does this turn out to be? 3 fourths? Yeah, 3 fourths. Um, all right, and what else do we have here? Um, are x and y independent? Um, actually, I can tell they aren't right away. I can go, actually, I can go up here to problem B. Um, probability x equal 1 given y equals 3. If they were independent, then y equal 3 should have no effect on x equal 1. Um, but it does, because given y is equal to 3, x equals 1 is 1, which is not equal to the probability that x is 1. Probably x is 1 is a half, but knowing that y equals 3 changed the probability that x equals 1. So here's just one case. I mean, any time that we can show probability um, x uh, equals x given y equals y is not equal to the probability x equals x, then we don't have independence. Remember we said if um, probability a given b is not equal to probability of a, then we don't have independence because B is changing um, what A would happen. I mean, a, a is dependent on B. Whatever happens with B changes the probability of A, so I don't have independence anymore. So I don't think I have any other... Oh, I do have the determine the conditional probability mass function of X given Y. So I'm trying to determine probability X, Y. So this means the conditional function of X given Y. X given Y. So by definition, this is the joint, which is the probability that x is x and y is y. I mean, maybe I should rewrite. I mean, this is x is x and y is equal to y. That's, that's what the joint is, divided by y on the bottom. So that's probability, the marginal, the probability that y is y. So down here is just the probability that y equals y. So on top we have um, the joint. Hmm. Do we have a nice function for that? Let's see. Um, up here, did we have a joint distribution? No, determine the conditional mass function of x given y. Well, that's what it should be, but I didn't actually have a function for x is x and y is y, do I? No. And on the bottom, the probability y is equal to y. Let's go back up here. That's just a, um, that's just a binomial down here. Um, 
let me clean this up a little bit because I need to put something here and then I'll be right back because this is, I, I think, already getting long.